Imagine a future where the environmental costs of our purchases were factored into the price. Imagine if legislation and policy were based on what was scientifically necessary to restore and protect our world. Imagine if businesses had the tools to understand the impacts of their decisions on our global ecosystems. Imagine picking up a T-shirt in a shop and finding the impacts of that T-shirt on our planet's health disclosed as transparently as nutritional facts labels disclose the impacts of food product on our health. Imagine a future where we could all hold one another accountable for the state of our planet. Planetary accounting could enable all of those things to become a reality. When we see news in the media about global environmental crises, climate change, biodiversity loss, pollution, it is very easy to feel overwhelmed. What can I do about deforestation in Brazil? How do my actions have any bearing over the fate of the last few rhinos in Africa? How can I, as one of over seven billion people on this planet, do anything about the terrifying trajectory that we are on towards irreversible global change? The problem is, very few people, if any, operate at those global scales. There isn't a global leader about to come and save the day. If we want to have any chance of redirecting that trajectory before it's too late, then each and every one of us needs to play our part. So what can we do? We've become really good at environmental accounting over the last few decades. Tools such as life cycle assessments can mean that I could look at this T-shirt and work out that over its life, there would be two kilograms of greenhouse gases emitted, 15 meters squared of land used, 2,700 liters of water consumed. That's about enough to fill three spa pools. But so what? Just like the um, price tag on this T-shirt would be of little use to me if I didn't understand the value of a dollar or if I had no idea how much money was in my bank account, these environmental values are of little use to me if I can't understand what good looks like. Sure, I could use it to look at this T-shirt against another T-shirt to understand which one is less bad. I could even compare the impacts of this T-shirt with some other activities. Three spa pools of water would buy me about 20 coffees, 300 grams of nuts, but it doesn't help me to answer the question of how many T-shirts can I buy this year? Is it three? Is it 10? If I don't buy any T-shirts this year, can I justify that trip to Fiji that I was hoping to go on? Traditional environmental accounting doesn't answer that question. So we look to science. In 2009, 28 internationally renowned scientists got together to say what are the mission critical global environmental limits. They found nine planetary boundaries. It's not just about greenhouse gas emissions and climate change. Our impacts such as novel entities, chemicals and plastics. Our impacts on the ozone layer, on air quality and on ocean acidification. The nitrogen and phosphorus that flows off agricultural land into waterways our water consumption, land use, and biodiversity impacts are all eroding the stability of our Earth system. Together, the planetary boundaries shown by the green circle in the middle of this diagram define the safe operating space for humankind. Within these limits, the risk of irreversible change is low. But as you can see from the diagram, we are not in that safe operating space. The planetary boundaries provide us some really important information about the magnitude and the urgency of the situation, but they also don't tell us what to do. To help explain what I mean, I'd like you to all close your eyes for a minute and imagine you're visiting the doctor. She weighs you, she takes your heart rate, measures your blood pressure, and then she shakes her head. It's very bad news, she tells you. You're obese, you have tachycardia, your blood pressure is through the roof. 
If you don't act urgently, it's all over. And then she gets up and sees you out of her office and sends you on your way. And that's more or less where the planetary boundaries leaves us, an urgent call to action, but no action plan. But of course, the doctor wouldn't do that. She'd sit with you and come up with a plan. She might say, don't eat any more than 2,000 calories a day. Get 20 minutes of exercise, five days a week. Take four milligrams of this medication three times a day. I have no idea what she would really say, but whatever it is, it would be specific to you, it would be measurable, and it would be actionable. And while it might not return you to good health overnight, it would give you the roadmap to return to and maintain your health. That's what planetary accounting is all about. It connects existing environmental accounting tools with the planetary boundaries to create a prescription for planetary health that we can all action. Just like financial accounting, planetary accounting works in currencies and budgets. Instead of dollars, francs and ringgit, it works in current environmental currencies such as greenhouse gas emissions, water consumption and deforestation rates. It sets out the global budgets in each of these environmental currencies that we need to adhere to to return to the safe operating space of the planetary boundaries. What does that look like in reality? Well, let's go back and have a look at that T-shirt. Planetary accounting tells us that there are 8,500 cubic kilometres of water that we can use every year. That's quite a lot. It would fill Lake Taupo 140 times. If we divide that up by the global population, and I'd like to caveat here that I'm not recommending that that's the best way to divide these global budgets, but for argument's sake, we divide that by the global population, we get a daily budget of 2,700 litres of water, enough to fill three spa pools. Instead of so what, we suddenly can understand that this T-shirt is worth one day's worth of water. Planetary accounting doesn't tell us whether or not to buy that T-shirt, that's really up to you. It depends what else you might want to spend that budget on. But it helps us to start to make those informed decisions, to understand how good is good enough. At Planetary Accounting Network, we're working on a really exciting project at the moment, Planetary Facts Labels. Just like nutritional facts, but they would set out environmental impacts, greenhouse gas emissions, water consumption, land use change, biodiversity, against recommended average daily limits. Suddenly, you could compare one T-shirt to another. You can compare the T-shirt to the way that you travelled to TEDx this morning, to the trip that you want to take to Fiji next year. But importantly, you could start to understand how all of those decisions come together to what living within the planet's limits might look like. But the value of planetary accounting doesn't lie in these uh, product labels. It is in the ability to translate science into action. If the last 12 months has taught us anything, it is the value of science-based decision-making. We're pretty lucky to be here today, and that is thanks to our governments, our businesses, and all of us acting according to science. That's meant different things for different people. Governments have had to grapple what the science means for policy, businesses working out new ways of operating, all of us have had to learn how to work within our bubbles. But all of our actions have been aligned by science, and therein lies our success. Planetary accounting is a framework that allows us to take this sort of approach to global environmental sustainability. The sorts of things it might be used for at a global scale are to inform global negotiations. Later this year, government officials are meeting to update, our, update commitments under the Paris Agreement for greenhouse gas emissions. Greenhouse gas emissions and climate change are only one of nine critical global environmental limits. Planetary accounting could be used to help them to extend those discussions, to make commitments around our, the planet as a whole. By assigning economic value to each of the environmental currencies, and I don't mean a market value like we do for carbon, but value based on what, is, what are the projected costs 
of overshoot of these global budgets, we could fundamentally change global economic models. The Ministry for the Environment released a report earlier this year called A Safe Operating Space for Aotearoa New Zealand. It's a translation of the planetary boundaries to a national scale, and the message is similar, an urgent call to action. Planetary accounting could form the basis for our national action plan. And moreover, it could form the basis for action plans for other countries who are also looking to the planetary boundaries for answers. And in that way, it could align our actions so that we can all work together on this common goal. At Planetary Accounting Network, we're already working on some really exciting initiatives. We're working with professional services firm Becker to create visions for cities and regions within the planet's limits, and then to map out the roadmaps that would help them to get there. We're working with the Redet Institute at Massey University on global food models. How will we meet the global nutritional needs within the planet's limits? We're working with companies such as Orion Group to set science-based targets across all of the planetary boundaries so they can start to understand what their new business as usual will look like in the future. We're in the early stages of some very exciting tech, helping businesses to make decisions from strategic decisions to day-to-day -day operations through the detailed design of products and services to align all of these decisions with science. And the next piece of tech that I'm really excited about is the development of a game where we can all compete with one another to live within the planet's limits. Planetary accounting can be used in such a diverse number of ways and at such diverse scales. But what's even more exciting about that is it can be used to connect all of those activities so that each of us can start to work together to align our targets towards a common goal. The term accounting, even when it's used as planetary accounting, perhaps isn't something that really feels like it reaches us at the soul. But for me, it does. And we're really lucky uh, to have an amazing kaumatua, Rauri Faramate, who's given us the story to help us to talk about why. It's called Te Porohita o Te Putaiao, the life circle of the environment. And it goes, Kia tō te rangi marie, o te rangi e tu iho nei, O papa tuanuku e takato nei. O te taiao afi, e afi nei, ki ranga i atato tihe wa Māori ora. And what it speaks to is that it is only when the spiritual world and the physical world are connected by the active participation of the kaitiaki, the guardians, of each and every one of us, that we can have total peace and well-being. And that's what planetary accounting is about at its core. It's about enabling each and every one of us to play our role in redirecting that trajectory that we're on so that we can return to and remain within the safe operating space of the planetary boundaries. So if you want to live in a future where price considers the environmental impacts, a future where legislation and policy are aligned with science, and businesses can make informed decisions about the maintenance of our global ecosystems. If you want to walk into a shop tomorrow and find planetary facts labels on T-shirts, then we need your help. These global environmental crises are overwhelming, but planetary accounting helps us to break those down into manageable chunks. So we invite all of you to join us in this journey as individuals, community groups, NGOs, businesses, and government organizations, so that we can all work together to help shape our future and hold one another accountable for the state of our planet. Thank you.